Title your notes land acquisitions and follow along by drawing pictures and copying down the notes in your history notebook. I encourage you to choose main ideas to draw purposeful doodles about so that you can remember some of the stories I tell you in the video as these are fair game on future quizzes and writing assignments. How did new territories become part of our country? Today we are going to learn how our country grew in size. How did it go from this, the 13 colonies, to this, the United States of America that we know today? land areas and expansion to 1860. Let's get started. The first territory to become part of our country is the Louisiana Purchase. You already know a lot about the acquisition of this territory. Thomas Jefferson, our third president at the time, purchased the land from France in 1803. He bought the land from Napoleon for only $15 million. With this purchase, the United States added some 13 states worth of territories at less than three cents per acre. Today, $15 million back then would be valued at $250 billion. The Louisiana Purchase doubled the size of our country in landmass, and Lewis and Clark were sent out to explore the newly acquired territory to draw maps and record observations about the kinds of plants, animals, and people who lived in these unknown regions. Which letter would the Louisiana Purchase be on this map of the United States? If you said F, you would be correct. The next territory the United States gained was Florida. Remember, Florida had been claimed by Spain even before Jamestown. St. Augustine is the first permanent settlement in North America, and it was settled by the Spanish in 1565. It remained under the possession of Spain until 1819 through a treaty between the U.S. and the Spanish back when James Monroe was president. Acquiring Florida was part of the United States was a big advantage to the U.S. because now we had total control of the Atlantic coast. The way that Monroe obtained Florida was because of the Seminole Indians, who lived in Florida and had begun to attack settlers near the Spanish border. When that happened, a U.S. military leader named Andrew Jackson invaded and took control of the area. After that action, President Monroe signed the treaty with Spain and purchased Florida for five $5 million. Find Florida on the map down below. Next to be added was Texas. Texas has a very interesting history. Texas was part of Mexico when Mexico gained its independence from Spain in 1821. In 1825, a man named Stephen Austin, an American, led a group of about 300 families to settle a colony in Texas. He had gotten the approval of the Mexican government. The colony grew quickly as more and more settlers came to join. But over time, the colony started to have disagreements with the Mexican government, and this created a problem. The tensions between the Texans and Mexico got so bad that in 1835, the Mexicans and Americans took up arms against, the, against each other about their issues, and this is known as the Battle of Gonzales. Fighting broke out throughout Texas, and the Texas Revolution began. You may have heard of the Battle of the Alamo in 1836, in which 180 Texans held off 4,000 Mexican soldiers for 13 days before being killed, including the infamous Davy Crockett. However, even though they had been defeated at the Alamo, the Texans declared their independence and formed their own country, called the Republic of Texas, on March 2, 1836. Then led by General Sam Houston, the Texans defeated the Mexicans at the Battle of San Jacinto. Despite the fact that Texans had declared independence, they were still vulnerable to attacks from Mexico. Some people wanted to join the United States, while others wanted to remain their own country. Sam Houston convinced the Texan leaders that joining the United States would offer Texas protection from Mexico as well as new trade partners. So on December 29, 1845, Texas was admitted as the 28th state of the United States of America. Texas had asked to join the U.S., and the U.S. granted them their wish, seeing this as an opportunity to gain import an important advantage, control of the Gulf of Mexico. Find the Texas territory on the map. Did you say D? 
the Oregon Territory gets added to the United States in 1846. Oddly enough, this land had been controlled by Great Britain, and the United States negotiated a treaty for it so that they could gain access to the Pacific Ocean. Lewis and Clark had explored the lands of the Oregon Territory way before they had traveled down the rivers in this area on their way toward the Pacific. The Oregon Trail was a 2,170-mile historic east-west large-wheeled wagon route and emigrant trail in the United States that connected the Missouri River to the valleys in Oregon. The eastern part of the Oregon Trail spanned part of the future state of Kansas and nearly all of what now is the United all of what now is Nebraska and Wyoming. The western half of the trail spanned most of the future states of Idaho and Oregon. Which letter would the Oregon Territory be on this map of the United States? If you said A, you would be correct. The Mexican Cession was a large portion of land in the West that the United States acquired in 1848 from Mexico when the U.S. won the Mexican-American War. This piece of land was a huge advantage to the U.S. because with it, America could gain control of the Pacific through the California coastline. Obtaining the Mexican Cession was part of President Polk's three-part plan with Mexico in which he planned to control the border of Texas, take over Mexico and California, and take over Mexico City. He was successful with some parts of this plan, but as we know, not all of his plan was achieved. Find the Mexican Cession on this map. Letter B shows this piece of land. The Gadsden Purchase is the last portion of land acquired in the early days of our history in 1853. The land was acquired from Mexico for a total of $10 million. That is a lot of money for such a small piece of land. The reason why the United States was devoted to purchasing this land despite how expensive it was is because the country was set on building a transcontinental railroad. Transcontinental means across the continent. They wanted to build a railroad to connect the east with the west. Three different railroad proposals were planned, and as you can see from the map, the Southern Pacific Railroad Company had planned to build a railroad route between San Francisco and New Orleans, crossing the Gadsden Purchase lands. The builders worked from both ways, hoping to meet in the middle. Over 10 years later, the first transcontinental railroad was finally completed in 1869. But guess what? They met in Promontory Point, Utah, and the plans for the Southern Pacific Railroad were abandoned. So we bought the Gadsden Purchase for nothing. Can you find the Gadsden Purchase on this map? Letter C shows this piece of land. Be ready for a map quiz next class.